Hello and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with immigration attorney Brian D. Lerner. I'd like to talk in this episode about what is called uh, the L-1 visa, which ultimately you can apply for the multinational manager visa. Now, I get lots of emails uh, from people all over the world who say, you know, they have uh, you know, hundred thousand dollars equivalent, more or less, they want to invest in a company, and can they come to the U.S. on an E-2? And many times, that's not possible because the first requirement of an E-2 is that the country have a treaty with the United States in order for them to come on an E-2. So one country in particular, a lot of times that I get these types of emails, uh, is from India. Now, it just so turns out that Pakistan has a treaty with the U.S., um, so they can get E-2s, but India does not. So what to do? Okay, how can they come over and run their own business? And this isn't just India. It's many countries around the world, uh, because when you think about it, there's about 42 countries that have treaties with the United States to come on E-2s, and every other country does not. So E-2s won't apply to those countries. So how can they come here <clears throat> and run their own business? Well, um, they can apply for what's called the L-1 if they meet the requirements. Now, with an L-1, there is no need to have a treaty in order to come here. What they have to have is their own business. OK, so uh, they have to have their own business and they have to essentially run it for about a year. OK, and by about a year, I mean a year or more. Um, and so a lot of these calls that I get and a lot of these emails I get, um, you know, with people who have money to invest, they also have their own businesses. So and that's where they got the money. So the fact that, you know, they don't qualify for an E2 isn't the end of the road. Um, because an L-1, um, you know, means intercompany transferee visa. It's when a person who is working overseas decides to transfer to a new office or a recently purchased, uh, not new office, but continuing office in the U.S. Uh, to run it, act as an executive or manager, and come over on the L-1 and then to keep the business running in their home country. So let's just say that you have a dry cleaning business, a trucking business, whatever it happens to be, it's wide open. As long as you keep it running, when you come to the U.S., then the L-1 is open to you. Now, I started this video off by saying L-1 and the multinational manager visa. So in addition to the L-1, if you come here and that works and you keep both companies running, the next step for the green card is called the multinational manager visa. And this is like an L1 except more. OK, um, you know, it's, it's just what it says. You manage two different companies in two different countries or more. Um, you are a multinational manager and you come to the U.S. So. You know, when I tell people about this, they've never heard of it. And they say, well, is it going to cost 500000 or a million dollars? And the answer is no. This is not like the EB-5 investment visa where you have to invest that amount. In actuality, the investment uh, for the L-1 and ultimately the EB-1C multinational manager is much less. I mean, way less. Um, I've done L1s where they've invested only fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, and the nice thing about that is, it can be a lot of that can be placed as capitalization in the bank account where there's all kinds of issues trying to do that with an E2. So, there are uh, lots of advantages and ways to come here on an L1. Now, let's just say that you have the necessary money to to get an E-2, but of course you don't qualify for an E-2. Um, and let's say you don't have your own business. Well, it's time to get your own business. Uh, you can buy one, whatever you have to do, get your own business and start running it. <clears throat> and then, you know, again, you need to run it for a year. It, you know, if you have the money to invest in your own business in the U.S. anyways, uh, chances are you will find a way 
to get a company running in your home country probably for a whole lot less uh, than it would take to open a company in the U.S. And it doesn't take that long. I mean, think about how long it takes, for example, for like a sibling petition to go through, you know, anywhere between 15 and 25 years. So if you have to run your own business for a year before coming here on an L1, well, then that's not that long of a wait. And if you are business savvy, you not only have to worry, you know, you not only can run the business, but you can actually make money at it, too, um, in both countries. So if you like the video, click like, subscribe and more on the coming videos. Thank you.